Hello, everybody. Welcome. Today, we are going to talk about solving a problem that is very common in claw hammer banjo. It has to do with the synchronization of your striking and fretting hands. I've got simple exercises that I'm going to do with you to fix this problem. Welcome to Banjo Quest. All right, before we get started, I'm just coming off of a week-long banjo camp that I ran virtually called Skeleton in Rose. It was a banjo boot camp, seven days of hard work within the claw hammer labyrinth. And it was a lot of fun. If you want access to that camp, which is still online, and hundreds and hundreds of other videos, including tablature for this video that you're watching today, and a bonus trick with a metronome that will blow your mind, hop on over to Patreon below, join the Banjo Quest. It is well worth it. I hope to see you there. All right, let's get started. So let me explain the problem to you, and then we can work on a solution together. The claw hammer stroke exists within a very simple grid. It's really an eighth note grid. There are obviously quarter notes, we have triplets, lots of things you can do within that grid. But for the most part, especially in the beginning stages of claw hammer, we sort of live and die by this eighth note pattern. And each of these eighth notes are really in pairs together. So the way I think about it is this. My downstroke is half of a pair, and my upstroke is the other half. My origin note is the downstroke, and my destination note is the upstroke. And I'll explain why that's important here in just a minute. Let's play this pattern together at 90 beats per minute, just to get used to what that sounds like. So grab your banjo, tune to double C. We're just gonna play on my count. One, two, three, four. Now we can complicate this pattern in lots of ways. Let's simply trade origin notes. So I'm going to do a downstroke on the first string, upstroke on the fifth, then a downstroke on the second string, open, and an upstroke on the fifth. It sounds like this. Let's play that together because this is laying the groundwork for what we're about to do. One, two, three, four. So where things get tricky here is when we start to activate the fretting hand for a series of moves, either a hammer on, pull off, or slide. Most of the time for many players, the origin note gets truncated and gets, the destination note gets rushed into. So let me demonstrate. I'm gonna show you what I mean here. If we've got a hammer-on pattern and then followed by a ditty on the second string, I'm gonna put that all together for you. I'm trading in an activated fifth string for my hammer. So the hammer on is happening on the upstroke of the right hand. Now think about that. If something were to go wrong here and I were to lurch into a hammer on too soon, first of all, it's gonna mess up my beautiful open eighth note sound, right? The other thing is it's going to disturb the relationship between the right and left hands. Those gears that we're trying to refine are the teeth are not gonna line up right and our groove is going to suffer. So this is a pretty amazing feature of claw hammer banjo. I want you to think about this. 90% of the time when you're doing active left hand moves, hammer-ons, pull-offs, or slides, those are happening on the upstroke of the right hand. Think about that for a minute. You're trading in a fist string for an active left hand or fretting hand family of technique. That's very powerful knowledge when you think about it because if there's something wrong with the synchronization of right and left hands, your patterns are gonna get all scrunched in weird places. So this is how we get good at measuring eighth notes. We're gonna set up a metronome and I'm going to play you three patterns. This is all tabbed out for patrons over on Patreon if you want that information. 
So we're gonna work through hammer-ons, pull-offs, and then the hardest one, slides. And we'll talk about why slides are the hardest in a bit. So I'm gonna just play this pattern. And we really wanna throw in and let the energy of your striking hand dispel into the instrument and wait before activating your hammer. You wanna wait until you're in a full upstroke to activate the hammer. In fact, from the outside looking in, it should almost look like there's some sleight of hand going on. Because we're trading in a fist string for a left hand move, it should almost look like you're extracting the sound of the pull off with the right hand. If things are going well, if you're well synchronized, it's almost like you're pulling that sound out with the right hand. You're not, it's all coming from your fretting hand, but it's a good sort of image to get in your mind, this sort of almost marionette-like motion where this hand throws, the, the striking hand throws into the instrument and on the upstroke, the left hand or the fretting hand gets activated into the instrument. So let's try this at 90 BPM. On my mark, one, two, three, four. Let's do the same for a pull-off pattern. So we're going to pull, and again, look at how the, the fretting hand action is attached to your upstroke. So when I do my upstroke, I do the pull. We're gonna be pulling off second fret first string and landing on a ditty on the open second string. 90 BPM, work with me here. A one, two, three, four. the slide is super tricky. This is the one that I see most people botch completely. They will lurch into the destination note. For example, let's take a slide on the second string from two to four frets. And you wanna measure that against the your striking hand. So it should look like you're pulling the slide out with your striking hand. Most of the time, especially up to speed, I see people lurching into the destination note and the hand is still down. It hasn't even begun its upswing. And then we're kind of stuck. We've collapsed our beautiful eighth note pattern that we've worked so hard to create. So the secret to this is I pause, let the energy send itself through that string. And then on the upstroke, I charge ahead and get my slide. Let's walk this down to 80 BPM so we can really work on this slowly. We're gonna do that pattern with followed by a ditty on the open second string. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Once you get this timing right, it is an incredibly powerful way to start correcting your phrasing in actual tunes. So practice this slow all together, kind of like this. Let's get up to 90 BPM and we'll practice this entire pattern. One, two, three, four, hammer. Yeah. 
So that is just a surface level exploration about the importance of the synchronization of striking and fretting hands within the claw hammer universe. If you want more information about this, more exercises, ways to perfect this, and a super cool trick that you can do with a metronome to really further refine this, head on over to Banjo Quest on Patreon. I'll have all that information there, plus tablature for the video that you just watched. Hope this helps. See you next time on Banjo Quest.